Hello everybody and welcome back to the Inner Sanctum YouTube channel. I'm your host, Iris Demetakos, and today we're back with another episode of Player Spotlight. Now, for those who haven't seen an episode of this series before, basically this is where we go through some players who are on the periphery of the Socceroos squad in or out of Graham Arnold's plans and basically looking at where their hopes lie heading into the World Cup in November. Now, as you can tell by the title of this video, we're doing it on Keanu Bacchus, so let's get into it. So who is Keanu Bacchus? Well, he's a 24-year-old defensive midfielder currently applying his trade for St. Mirren in the Scottish First Division. He was actually born in South Africa before moving to Australia at a young age and played his youth, youth football for a variety of clubs around New South Wales, including Blacktown Spartans and Blacktown City. He was then signed to Western Sydney Wanderers um, in 2014, playing for their youth team for three years, um, from 2014 to 2017, before being promoted to the senior team in 2017, where across five years playing for Western Sydney, he, played, he made 106 appearances. Um, he then moved to his current club at the start of this season, playing all 11 times or starting all 11 games for St. Mirren this season. He's played for the Socceroos um, once. He made, he made his debut in the game against New Zealand, the most recent game against New Zealand, making it being a second-half substitute, um, playing about 10 minutes. He's played 13 times for the under-23s and five times for the under-20s. So he's been around the blocks, especially at youth level for the Socceroos. So he knows, he knows what everything's about. He knows how to get into the system, and he's obviously been around the blocks um, in Australia, and he's obviously applying his trade at a very good side in Scotland. They're currently sitting in the top five in the Scottish um, First Division, and that is partly down to Bax's brilliance this season. So as we always do on this series, let's take a look at who is Keanu Bacchus on the pitch. Let's take a look at his player profile and what he can offer to the Socceroos. So as we always do on this series, let's take a look at Keanu Bacchus's player profile. Now, straight away, let's go right into the heat map. Now, this is heat map so far for his season at St. Mirren. As I said at the start of this of this episode, he has played all 11 times at the time, at this time of recording. He started all 11 games for them this season. And as we can see, he's, he plays a little bit of a, of a strange role. Now, the, the formation that St. Mirren play, they play with a flat three in midfield, or they definitely play with a three in midfield, maybe with a, with a single pivot slightly deeper. But the main feature of this, of this midfield is that the right side, wide midfielder, which as you can see in this case he's counted Bacchus, isn't playing as a traditional wide midfielder in a sense. He's playing almost like a Carrillo. Now a Carrillo is a term that describes a variant or a, or a different type of a wide central midfielder playing like on either side, left or right um, of, of, a, of a single pivot in midfield. Now they're similar to a box-to-box -box midfielder, however they have a lot more emphasis on defending rather than attacking. Now instead of instead of pushing up and down, working um, up and down the pitch, they actually work laterally. They act as a shutter as a shuttler across the pitch almost 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 acting as a wide defender. We've covered a couple of players who occupy similar roles on this series before, but as we can see here, he occupies a wide midfield role in a defensive sense. Now his main role in this team is to act as this as this wide defender to allow his fellow um, Australian Ryan Strain, who was who's having a very good season for St. Mirren as a right wing back slash right back, allowing him to really bomb on and being one of St. Mirren's best players. That's what his role in the team is is there to do. And acting as this wide midfielder shows that he can have a lot of versatility because when he, when we saw his role at Western Sydney, it was a lot more of a traditional defensive midfielder. We saw him sitting at the base of a midfield just in front of the back, just in front of the two centre backs and was really occupying a traditional role. Whereas here, as we bring up, as we bring up his heat map one more time, it is a very, it's a different role. This is a very strange, heat map if you if you were to just show someone and, and ask them to describe it now what this does is this allows for a lot of balance in midfield for St. Moran because he occupies a very um, a very traditional role in terms of what he offers what he offers is very traditional in terms of he's a pure, purely defensive midfielder. He just does it in a very in a different position in a, in a different way. He occupies different areas of the pitch. Now, this season, occupying because of this role he's occupying, his main strength has been his defensive positioning, and by virtue of this, his football IQ. Now, when you play a position like this, your ment the mental side of your game in terms of your football IQ, like I said, has to be has to be on point because it's a role which requires a lot of nuance and requires a lot of um, attention. Because if you switch off for one second, the there's got going to be loads of space in behind, and you uh, you have the trust of your of your fullback that you're playing alongside. You have his trust to to defend him and to protect him. We see a similar role being played, or we've seen a similar similar role being played by Jordan Henderson for Liverpool, um, playing uh, in or in the previous seasons, I should say, um, do acting as that defensive shuttle for Trent Alexander Arnold in previous seasons. Now this is this is a very very similar way in which Keanu Backs plays for Ryan Strain. Now this season, um, if if you take a look at some of his stats. He has 2.77 tackles per 90, 0.96 key passes per 90, 75.4 um, accurate pass percentage, 
and 4.5 ground jewels won. All of those stats per 90 this season. He has, like I said, started all 11 games, played all, all 11 games for Sammy Ren, so we have a pretty good sample size, and he's having a very good season. Uh, Sammy Ren are, are currently in the top four of um, the Scottish of the Scottish Premiership um, at the time of recording, and this is partly down to his brilliance playing in midfield, playing a very solid role for them, and being a real pivotal player to give the base for the attacking players, especially Ryan Strain, like I've said, to really show show themselves and express themselves and express just how good they can be. Now, while, while we don't see this role be, have been occupied or while we don't see this role played um, for the Socceroos in particular or for other clubs in Europe, this versatility, like I, like I mentioned just before, that he can play as a traditional single pivot, but he can also occupy this Carrillo role, this versatility will hold him in great stead going forward. Like I said, he's only 24 years of age. He's only just coming into the period of his footballing career where he's going to be um, att attracting some big some big teams, some big teams um, coming into the transfer market, coming into the January as well. And after the World Cup, if he's able to make the squad, then we can see his, his stocks explode exploding in a sense because we've seen uh we've seen we've seen in the past that Australia in particular have struggled to have a proper defensive midfielder and with the 0.96k passes as well he showed that he's more than just a destroyer he can play with the ball at his feet and that is going to be something that will attract a lot of clubs in uh, that will be attractive to a lot of clubs in Europe because the versatility is something that a lot of clubs don't have in in their central in their central defenders and as uh, essential defensive midfielders I should say and as the modern game progresses and as football progresses you need the versatility you need to be able to play a different roles in in the same game you need, you need to be able to have different strengths so this versatility that Bacchus has and this ability to play a very nuanced role very well um, will, will hold him in good stead going forward but as we always do let's move on to his Socceroos career to date and also where his future lies because like I said at the top of the show he has only made one appearance for Socceroos so we can't really do a whole lot of analyzing from that in that respect so let's just go straight ahead to where his future lies in the Socceroos show so as we always finish up on this series let's take a look at where Keanu Bacchus' future lies heading in, heading into the World Cup and in, in his Socceroos future. Now, when we look at the World Cup, the squad at the time of recording is going to be announced in three weeks' time. And with the injury doubts of Adrian Hustic, who is under an injury cloud, and the likes of Tom Rogic, who's struggling for form and struggling for fitness as well, it, he could potentially be a smoky for the squad. Now, we know that the, the, the squad of 55 has been um, finalized by Graham Arnold. That hasn't been made, um, made publicized to the public, I should say. Um, so we don't know. We should assume that he's in that 55 squad based on based on the virtue of the fact that Australia don't really have a lot of true defensive midfielders and the fact that he's played very well for St. Mirren this season should earn him a place in that provisional squad. Now, whether or not he makes a squad, well, you've got to look at the competition that he's up against. Now, Aaron Moy, who plays traditionally in that number six role, uh, despite it being a very different role, obviously Aaron Moy being a lot more of a ball-playing um, central defensive midfielder rather than a destroyer, he does occupy that position and will probably be the first name on the team sheet considering how well he's playing for Celtic as well. Um, and then you have the likes of... Um Kenny Dougal is playing very well for Blackpool as well as Cam Devlin who's playing very well um, in Scotland as well so they're the three players that he's kind of competing with in a sense when when you look at that number six um, defensive defensive minded um, midfielder role um, when you look at other midfielders obviously obviously you have the likes of Hustich and um, Jackson Irvine these players who who have been a stalwart in the Socceroos um, system for a long time, he, these are the players that, while he's isn't directly competing with, if he can oust them and add a little bit more defensive stability, that's where he needs to be looking um, to, to kind of make his name to the squad. Now, if we're going to be if we're going to be honest in a sense, or if we're going to look at it from a rational perspective, it'll be it'll be very. It's there's a, there's a slim chance that he makes the the squad heading in, into Qatar, just based on the fact that he's only made he hasn't been really in favour for the Socceroos squads over the over the previous um, international breaks. I mean, he didn't make the squad um, for the clutch games against UAE or Peru, didn't make the squad before that against the, uh, against Japan and Saudi Arabia, another uh, two games which Australia had to win. He did make the, the squad to verse the, in the two friendlies against New Zealand. He did make an appearance, like I said, against New Zealand in the second game. That was a 10-minute substitute appearance um, in the 80th minute, so he only came off for 10 minutes. So he, he obviously isn't in favour at the moment um, in Graham Arnold's plans, but considering he's only 24 years of age, by the next, by the time the World Cup comes around next time, he'll be 28, he'll be in his prime, and hopefully he'll be playing for a for a big club in Europe. We all know um, we all know how, how we all know the breeding ground that Scotland is is providing for, for some talent from, from, from some young 
young Australian talent, I should say. So if you can propel his career from there, maybe you can get a look in um, into the World Cup in four years' time or even in the Asian Cup um, the next time that rolls around. But if he makes a squad, I think he'll be a very valuable asset for Australia. He does offer that defensive stability. He is a true defensive midfielder, which Australia have lacked for a long time. So that could be something that he that could be something that he could maybe aspire to in a sense, and that could be something that Graham Arnold could look to if he were to include him. But I think the the amount of talent that Australia have in midfield and the amount of competition that he has in midfield, I don't think he'll be able. To, I don't think he'll make the plane for Qatar, barring any any last minute injuries or form slumps or anything of that nature. But yeah, Backus, he's still 24, still has a bright future ahead of him. I just don't think him. I just don't think he'll make an appearance in Qatar in November. But four years time, he should be on the plane if his career continues the trajectory that it's going on. So yes, that is it. Thank you all very much for watching another episode of Player Spotlight on Keanu Backus. Make sure you subscribe to the Inner Sanctum YouTube channel, like the video, leave your thoughts in the comment section below of Keanu Backus' season, whether or not you think he deserves a place in the Socceroos squad, as well as other players you you want be given a player spotlight in the future. But yes, like I said, thank you all very much for watching. Subscribe to the Inner Sanctum YouTube channel, like the video. See you guys next time, and goodbye.